Step one is get comfortable. Could be leaning back against something, could be sitting cross-legged, might have your legs up or out in front of you. The value, the goal that I, I advise is something you can relax enough into that you can stay still for about 15 minutes. This one's about 15. If you can be square, have your head on straight, as my dad used to say, your feet on the floor and an equal distance from your heels to your, your butt, that's a good idea. Your hands wherever you can relax and let them fall. Step two, all right, body's in place. Let's see what we can do to direct attention in useful ways. Step one would be bringing attention to the eyeballs. You have two of them, right and left, obviously. And we're a very visual culture. We're a very visual species. We take in a lot of information. And there's a very strong possibility some of the eye muscles, because they get used not only to see the world, but in some ways to process information, it can usually be some gripping somewhere, maybe inside the eyeball, maybe around the the periphery or the ripple of the eyeball. If your eyes were the center of where a pebble had been tossed into a lake and ripples went everywhere across your face. So here's our goal in different places for the next 15 minutes. Maybe feel a little bit more than listen to the words in our head and the pictures in our mind's eye. They will be there. They do their thing. There's not a lot we can do about them. It's just how brains work. But what we can do is get more and more absorbed into something, let's say, in the face. A point of view, so to speak, really matters. So it's as if I'm in my face looking outwards, as if I was underwater looking up at the sky. I kind of look up through my cheekbones, through the small, oh, I don't know, eighth inch, quarter inch of skin, that is above the cheekbones before it meets the world. And as you move your attention around, the way you shine a flashlight here or there, you can begin to notice a whole batch of different, subtly different, sometimes more different, sensations. A fancy physical therapist will call it a kinesthetic experience. What, what is the kinesthetic experience? Well, if you're a visual experience, what you see, this is the sensations in your body. Let's focus on the jaw. Now, you might notice that you've got tension inside the jaw. You might feel something achy around the muscles of the jaw. To some degree, we can say it's only a little relevant what we discover, what's there. Because each second you spend feeling, as opposed to thinking, body relaxes a little bit. I, I don't quite know how this works, but you plug your attention into sensation, and the neuromuscular intelligence, whatever that is, resets. It's like restarting the computer. So please direct your attention down into the throat. I'll just give a long suggestion of areas and some details of how you can pay attention with either a wider focus or a more detailed perspective to get different levels of information. I kind of ask you to take it on faith that in about 12 more minutes you'll feel a little better, maybe a lot more calm, I don't know. But it is useful. It's called coming back to yourself. So please, the volume of muscle on the top of the shoulder, like below your ears, that big beefy stuff that gets all tight and tense when you want to eat someone's liver with a fava beans and a good Chianti. Maybe explore the space between the shoulder blades, the sensations on the outsides of the arms. You can direct your attention through the cylinder of the arm as if your eyes were looking downwards and somehow be able to direct your attention to the elbow. Two forearm bones, one upper arm bone kind of bump into each other and there'll be different classes of experience. Maybe temperature, maybe you can feel the texture of your shirt. It's a suggestion that any of those are in the family of sensation, the nerve processing system of sensation and direct experience of your body. Keep going, go into your wrist area. My wrists have some achy areas, arthritis, that's okay. You go, okay, that's easy to find. I can feel where my thumb's a little inflamed, or you can bring attention into the center of your hand. Wherever you go, wherever you place attention, those muscles will let go. They just do. Check it out. You can feel something opening. You can bring your attention into the front of the chest, breastbone, the sternum, 
and then you've got all those ribs branching off of it to the sides like an accordion. In between the ribs there's muscle, intercostal muscle. And it's a volume of space about an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch between the ribs depending on where you are. I place my attention there and I feel some achiness or a bruise or I don't know, something, a little tremor in a muscle, something gripping. You can bring your attention to the front of the body, to the diaphragm. Diaphragm's at the base of the ribs. If someone knocked you there with an elbow or something, you might knock your breath out. Each of us feels different things in different areas. There's the sort of emotional interpretation in this approach. Yeah, not so useful. See what you can do to stay stable into the feelings of, let's say, the tightness, if there is any, in the belly, or maybe there's a feeling of weightedness. There are families of sensations. There's temperature. You might find pain or irritation somewhere. If you bring your attention to the hip bones, those dumbo ears on the front of your pelvis, or if you bang your hip, You've got your butt cheeks, you've got everything you're sitting on, pelvic floor they call it. Your mind can focus down through the torso, in through the belly, down into the pelvis, and you'll feel things, you'll feel different sensations. As long as you're feeling something, you are by definition coming back to yourself. Self happens in here. We don't need to know what a self is, that's a philosopher's discussion, this is practical. You can register the sensations that define the front, the side, and the back, and the side of your right leg. Pick a right leg. Let's say right leg. Somewhere in the middle of that, there's a bone. I kind of try and reach with my attention to feel inside the center of that cylinder, the axis. Where is the bone? Where are the muscles closer and closer to the center of this particular cylinder? You can look through this into the knee. Some of us have had some knee issues, all right? Maybe there's some tenderness you can feel. If you slightly tighten the knee muscles, relax the knee, tighten the right knee, relax the right knee, gets you more information, kind of patches us in. Oh, right, there I am. There's my knee. Looking a little further, a further down, literally, inside the calf, you have two shin bones. Don't quite need to know where they are, but there's something bony in there, and then there's a batch of meat and muscle. You can bring your attention down to the Achilles, back of, the, uh, back of where the tendon attaches on the calcaneus, the back of the heel bone. If you like, zooming down inside, you've got a batch of bones in there. Don't need to know quite what they look like, but there's muscle around the bones, the sole of the foot. You've got tendons on the top of the foot. And maybe just a few small movements of the toes. Maybe that can trigger some muscular contraction, makes it a little easier to feel. If we're moving, it's a little easier. Sensations are a little stronger. But let's move on. Back to the left thigh. Left thigh, in this case, the front, the side, the back, and the side. Demarcate where world meets you. Now, you're inside that volume. If you bring attention to the hamstring, if you've ever had a pulled hamstring, I hope not. Take forever to heal. Maybe there's some tight achiness. Maybe there's a sense of crampiness. Back of the knee is rather sensitive. Might feel, I'm not even going to apply words, but if you direct your mind's eye to register what's there, you can make sense of that. Maybe it's a sensation of temperature, pain. These are the, the baseline feelings that we normally can feel moving through the body. Left calf. left Achilles tendon, spaces between the bones of the left foot. And then in the few minutes remaining, just a few mental gymnastics. Try this one from the left foot to the right foot. Again, you define, I define, where's the top, the sides, the underside, and then whatever's in the middle of that, I kind of teleport my mind in there like the old Star Trek. Hmm, let me feel in there. Try both feet together, both ankles at the same time. It's kind of a retrograde, a reversing back the other way up the calf. You can feel the cylinders of both calves. You can take a moment, take a moment to feel your knees. It might be the back of the knee, front of the knee, side of the knee, any sensation will do. 
quadriceps outside of the thigh, inside of the thigh, back of the leg. You can bring your attention up further and further, perhaps into the butt cheeks, pelvic floor inside the pelvis. You got organs and so much more. Attention somewhere into the tummy, the belly. From side to side, from front to back. And then this circle of attention, like a flashlight being illuminating some dark corner of a room, you shine attention to different places, the insides of the ribs as you breathe in and out or out and in. The armpits, why not? Any sensation will do. You can be a little into the underside of the arm or a little into the sides of the rib cage. And if it's a little awkward or a little hard to feel, you can tighten the muscle slightly and release it. Slightly tighten and slightly release. It's a bit harder to feel released, but a little cheating every now and then never hurt anybody. You can continue this journey through the arms, the upper arm, to the elbow, inside the forearm, whatever sensations may or may not be here. Front of the palm area, top of the hand, top of the fingers, fingernails, tips of the fingers. Might be skin, might be somewhere inside, closer to the bone. Moving on, moving on to the front of the throat, sides of the neck, two to three inches of meat between bone and skin, back of the neck. Base of the skull. Any sensation on the back of the head. Always a little tricky for me to feel the back of my head. Top of the head. As if water was poured on your crown of your skull and it dripped down to the temples, the eyebrows, the forehead area. You could follow the path of tears down your cheeks, feeling for any sensation in the skin, maybe a little deeper. As if you could become absorbed into the eyes again, down into the throat, the ear canal. You might find some small movements of the jaw. Finishing and returning to some degree as we began, back to the eyes. As if you were back behind your eyes, the perspective looking through them, out into the world, seen, in your mind's eye at least, from a deeper point of view. A little further inside yourself. Taking a moment to move your attention any way you like, somewhere in the skull. Anywhere through the torso. Down to the pelvis and the legs. The ankles, the toes, the feet. To then somehow travel back up. Through the knees, through the hips. Reversing the direction back up into the belly, and the diaphragm and the chest. Ultimately returning back to the eyes. Last time, last time. As if you were parking a car, pulling into the parking spot, you can bring your attention and rest them into the eyes. And taking a moment to kind of notice how you're doing, what effects, if any, last 15 minutes might have had. Might be breathing a little slower, a little differently at least. Facial muscles, whatever has happened, maybe they relaxed, I don't know. Good to know though, good to check. Please slightly tighten the eyes and then relax them. Slightly tighten them and then relax them. Slightly tighten the eyes and then ever so softly allowing just a few photons of light to fall into your eyes. See just a little bit of the world, blurry lines, blurry lines, and then they close. Last time, slightly tighten the eyes 
And then as you begin to open the eyes, soft little blinks, taking the time you need to reorient out into the world, your eyes blink, blink, blink. Each time you blink, vision gets wider, you kind of reorient back to the room. One of the great gifts of, yes, you can see the world around you, you can look up, look down, side, side. And you can also leave part of your attention somewhere, like in your hands or your chest, upper back. This technique is more than just a sitting practice. It's a lifestyle. May we feel ourselves. May we spend a little, a little more time registering how we're doing than thinking, thinking about how we're doing. Wish you all the best and hope that you can through either this practice or whatever practices work best for you. May you calm down, may you center, may you come back to yourself. We all do, do our best in life from that point of view. Thanks.